As we all know, buying a TV is very complicated and I've done a lot of videos on Sony products. And today we're gonna to take a look at the Sony Bravia 3. The Bravia 3 is an entry level television for Sony's lineup. It doesn't have those robust features like mini LED or OLED, but it does still provide a lot of great performance for the money. It's powered by the X1 processor and apparently they've been using this processor for years and it makes you think if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. The design on this TV is a little bit boxy compared to some of the other TVs on the market and it does have those older feet so you have to have a bigger stand to fit it. But one thing you can say about this TV is that it still has the color signs that Sony's brought to us for many years. But the question is, is this TV worth upgrading if you have the X80J or the X80K? Well, I did a little research and it appears that this TV has the same processor, the same PPI, the same mounting brackets, but there are some differences. For example, this TV has hands-free Google voice command. It also has the new Android 12, so it's gonna have some improvements with the software. And it has features like 24P for cinema, HDR object tracking, Apple AirPlay 2, and it has this new remote control that's more eco-friendly to the planet and it has some nice speckles on it to give it a great design. I will say that one other thing that's major is that the previous versions had IPS panels and this one has a VA panel unless you decide to go with the 75 inch, you still get the IPS panel, which is known to give you better colors as well as better viewing angles, but can come along with some extra blooming. Now this was interesting. When I went to go calibrate this TV, you normally go into the app store and download this app called Calman for Bravia and this allows you to connect it to the software for automatic calibration. But when I searched for it, it basically came up blank. This is interesting because it looks like they removed the Bravia calibration application from this particular model. I also checked Google's website with my Wi-Fi enabled. And again, with this on my account, it shows that it's not a available TV to have the automatic Calman software installed on it. So if I get some time, I'll manually calibrate this, but I really like the fact that you can use automatic calibration so you can get the best picture quality with the computer figuring it out. Other than that, this TV has a great picture whenever you're watching just your sporting events and the motion on it is smooth thanks to the motion flow, which is part of the Sony X1 processor. But what really stands out to me is how natural everything looks on Sony televisions. In my opinion, it's just really hard to beat the way the Sony televisions look. And if you're trying to figure out why Sony TVs look better than some other television, it's because of a feature called Trilumius Pro. But what is that? Triluminos Pro improves on its predecessor by implementing a new advanced 3D algorithm. This expands the color space available to the TV. With more shades of color, picture can be displayed with amazing realism. While this is especially impactful with HDR content, Triluminos Pro improves the color of everything you watch. The movie experience on this TV is decent. And what I mean by that is that this TV doesn't have local dimming zones to tighten up those black levels. So when I was playing content on it, I definitely could see a little bit of the gray glow coming in from the backlights. Now I will say that this TV has a really good picture quality as far as the colors and all the details, but in my opinion that mini LED and OLED is really taking over for giving you those inky black levels. And I will say that this TV looks great but it's not perfect. Another thing I found that was really good on this television, it's upscaling. So I created a new demo that has 480p that's cropped. As you can see that the colors on it is fantastic as well as the upscaling is doing a fantastic job. And when I switched over to 720p, it even got better and it fit the screen properly. But if you really wanna get a really good picture out of most televisions, including this Bravia 3, you definitely wanna use at least 1080p content, which is the majority that we watch every day. But of course, the 4K content is gonna bring out all the sharp colors that this TV is designed to produce. And to be honest, I wasn't surprised cause Sony's always had a great picture from the previous reviews that I've done. And if you happen to have four by three content, you can still zoom into the screen with the features to kind of stretch it out to fit a little bit better. But most people are gonna use 720p signal and better. Looking at the previous generations of this TV, the NITS rating is around 400. And I think this one would be very similar. So I was kind of worried about watching HDR content, but looking at these images, I think for the average person, it's not only gonna be bright, but with the new HDR processing, I think this picture looks fantastic. Again, those black levels are not gonna be inky, but when it comes to those color reproduction, HDR is gonna be just fine. 
for your streaming application like Netflix, 4K, Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, or even Max. Now, speaking of HDR and Dolby Vision and HLG that this TV supports, some things to take consider is that Dolby Vision is a 12-bit format, meaning that the metadata from that signal going up to your television is gonna produce all the colors that the director intended, all the colors that the cameras can do at these big movie studios. This is a 8-bit panel with frame rate control, so it's not possible to really experience that on this television, but will you get Dolby Vision, a little pop-up on your screen? Yes. So take that in consideration when you're thinking about Dolby Vision that you technically want to have a very expensive TV OLED mini LED that has a high nits rating of a thousand plus to be able to really experience it. Back to that Sony color science, here's some skin tones on this television and it looks fantastic. Now, when I calibrated a few of the Sony TVs in the past, I would tell you that they didn't need many adjustments and I feel that this Bravia 3 will be very similar. I'm not sure if you can increase the black levels because of the technology, but when it comes to just natural looking, this TV looks fantastic in my opinion. Now, as far as dirty screen effects, I would say that this TV is pretty well balanced. I see just some slight venetting in the corners, but if you're looking for a screen that's really consistent across the board, the Bravia 3 does a fantastic job. And even though this is a vertical alignment panel, I did expect better results when I did a blooming test. As you see that the blooming is not too bad, but it's very obvious that the backlights are bleeding through. So if you're watching a movie late night with anamorphic widescreen plan on it, chances are that you're gonna see the backlight bleed on this television. But if you're not used to more expensive televisions with full array or televisions with a lot of local dimming zones, it's probably something that you're gonna be used to anyways. I'm not saying that you should run out and buy this television, but giving the right expectations, what to expect is what this video is all about. And just playing content that fills up the screen you're going to be very happy it's just those moments when you have that widescreen content that this is noticeable but at least you'll be aware of what to expect so that's my take on the picture quality if you're interested next let's talk about audio well this tv has 10 watts by 2 and i think it sounds decent for tv speakers but you might want to look at some of the other sony lineups that are sound bars that connect right to the tv to give you a better experience with hdmi e art with that being said, this is a Tech Steve audio test for the next few moments. Sit quietly and experience the range of this TV's audio capabilities as we test the boundaries of sound. So that gives you an idea of what it sounds like and it all depends on which device you're playing this video back on. But for me, I thought it sounded pretty good. Now this TV doesn't have that new feature called voice zooms that enhances the dialogue. You're gonna have to go with a more expensive Sony television to get that feature. But for most people, the average person watching the news, sporting events, I think they're gonna be perfectly fine with the audio system on this TV. Now, on my main video, I did go over the menu system as well as gaming. Go check that out, but I want to show you a little clip of what the game looks like. And keep in mind, this TV is 60 frames per second. Something to be aware of is that if you plan a PS5, you can see it's locked into game mode and people might try to change this particular setting and get a little frustrated. But all you need to do is just pull up one of the applications. For example, I'll play this test disc that I use and watch what happens to this picture mode down here. Now it has the options where I can change it around. So remember, you won't be able to change it if it's in the game setting, but as a minute you put on the application, you'll get access again to make those changes so you can set it up the proper way for the content that you're watching. If you're a gamer, I think the experience on this television is really nice. I mean, most games are still 60 frames per second. So unless you plug it into a PC that you need those higher frame rates, I think it's gonna be just fine. Plus it does have a gaming bar. Now, so the last few things I wanna mention on this television, 
For example, it has two USBs, a fiber optic output, and it has four HDMI 2.1 inputs, and one of them is eARC, so you can run that over to your soundbar and do Dolby Atmos pass-through. In my experience, the viewing angles on this television are really good. I didn't know what to expect, being that this is that VA panel. So in my opinion, Sony did a really good job. So if you move from side to side or map the TV above a fireplace, I think it's gonna be very suitable for those type of applications. This TV doesn't have an anti-glare coating on it, but if you have a lot of windows in your room and a lot of lights in the room, you're gonna see some type of glare. But keep in mind, it looks like they have some type of coating on this television, which I'm yet to determine. So it's not like having a piece of plastic that's gonna reflect everything. So the question is, what do I think about this Sony televisions? I think it looks as good as the X80J, X80K reviews I did in the past. I was expecting a little bit more contrast from those black levels, but again, you can go in and make some adjustments, but we gotta realize this, technology is gonna move us forward. There's people who don't wanna connect to the internet, but all TVs are smart. Some people don't wanna do these things, and I get it. But the whole thing is, is that Sony, they're trying to still make a value TV for them, but the rest of the market is changing. You know, you can get Hisense TCLs at the same price as this with a lot more features, but at the end of the day, it's still a Sony and it's gonna perform like a Sony. So that's all I have for you on this video. If you guys are interested in learning more or reading more reviews, I'll leave some links in the description below. But other than that, this is not a sponsored video. I paid for this TV with my own money and just trying to bring some content to you guys. Thanks all for watching. I'm Tech Steve, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.